So you know what's funny? Uploading a video response about plays before going to a matinee, before going to a rehearsal, before going to another rehearsal. Living the dream. Okay, so... Uh, sorry, this is a like, couple of days after the fact, but, you know, busy people. Um, plays that have really stood out to me in the last... Last two or three years, I have to say, uh, my friend got me into this piece by Steve Martin. Th yes, uh, that Steve Martin. Uh, it's called Picasso at the Lapin Agile. And it was just hilarious to me uh, when she did a section in, in one of our acting classes. It just blew me away. I'm like, I have to read this play. Read the play. Loved it immediately. Got to... Got to audition for it a few years after that, and I got the part of Einstein. So I got to play Einstein in this very witty, very funny um, history piece um, by Steve Martin. And it just, you know, maybe I'm a little, bu little bit biased because I got to play in it, but it's good. I s highly recommend it. It's not a, it's not a long read, so. But it's a good one. It all takes place in a bar in Paris, um, just about the turn of the century, or about to be the turn of the century. You know, Picasso's there, of course, and Einstein's there, and they're talking about all the ways how the world's going to change in the next 100 years or so. Since we're on American playwrights, um, I guess I should also mention the man who got me back into American playwrights, as of course Eugene O'Neill. I mean. How can you not admire his work? He did so much uh, for American literature and American drama. Uh, one of the pioneers of realism theater um, in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. Um, and it just, I was just floored by his, his autobiographical piece, Long Day's Journey Into Night. It just, it just, it just did that. It took all descriptive thought I had away. It just floored me. Um, you know, just how he harks into all his all his um, problems: the alcoholism, the depression, the um, you know, his love of the sea is in there too. You know, he harps on his brother Jamie. It's in there. Touches on all that stuff. You know, the problems his parents had to go through. Um, it's very moving piece of literature, very revealing. Um, if you haven't read it, you really do. If you don't read anything else by Eugene O'Neill, you need to read A Long Day's Journey Into Night. You should read a lot of his stuff. You should read almost everything, I think. Um, you know, like The Hairy Ape, and a lot of his one acts are so are fantastic, and The Iceman Cometh. You should, all, you should read all those things. Um, you, if you didn't like, if you don't like early American literature, you'll I think you'll be won over by O'Neill. Uh, let's touch on the classics, because uh, we touched on the you touched on the classics a little bit, and of course, can't talk about theater without talking about William. Um, Midsummer will always have a special place in my mind, in my bookshelf. Um, it was one of the first professional, if not the first professional Shakespearean plays I got to see. I to see it in Stratford at the Shakespearean uh, Festival. Still got the ticket somewhere back there. Um, and it just blew me away. Um, they just really went all out with that production that year. Uh, it's, the acting was spot on. Casting was spot on. They actually had aerial artists come in for scene changes. That's right. They, they tumbled down from the ceiling from these almost Cirque du Soleil. Um, style trapeze artist thing for scene changes. And I was just like, they're doing this, and I'm right there in the audience. And I'm like, that close. Okay, maybe not that close, but there was still pretty good seats for um, a field trip. Uh, I'll always have, I, was, I will always have a respect for Othello. I think that that play is. It can either be done so well, or it can go so horribly wrong. And it's just, it all hinges 
on how how good your Michael Cassio is and how your Othello and Desdemona interact and how of course your Iago commands the audience. How how well you can translate his just sinister his hatred for these people. I think that really hinges on stuff, so really enjoy that. That piece of work and Again, maybe I have some bias, but Julius Caesar is probably one of his best history plays because I was in it. I was in a production of it. Um, uh, but I wasn't a I wasn't a main character in that at all. I was one of like the senators. And, like, yeah. Um, oh, and a servant in there too. I was an extra, really. Um, but it was a good experience. We had a great director for Julius Caesar, and it really really gave me an appreciation for William's writing style going in that production. I guess I should touch on something that's really been kind of drilled into my education, being taught um, in the traditional university setting. Um, I had to read a lot of ancient Greek, and so Sophocles, Oedipus Rex, definitely has wedged itself, I don't know wedged itself, but definitely it's it's installed itself into my processing for what is tragedy, drama, in our western civilization kind of started it all. I would like, I'd like to do a production of a modern day Oedipus Rex. Maybe I'll get around to that. We'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you all posted. Um, but it really just stood out. I mean, it really just stands out. I mean, a guy to go through so much that he just is driven to complete madness. That should be about it. I have to upload this quick so I can uh, hit up that matinee. And thank you, Cecily, for posting up this topic. You always you always know how to engage in a in an exciting conversation on this YouTube community, so thank you for that. Hope all is well, and everyone, you stay classy. <laughs>